So let's find the cosine inverse of cosine of pi over 6. If you saw my other videos about trig, inverse trig functions, sometimes you see them um, in, you see these problems in different ways. Notice that this one, if you remember the cosine inverse, cosine inverse of something basically means, let's say I said one half, it means what angle has a cosine of one half. So your answer to this is going to be an angle. What angle has a cosine of one half? And if you look at your unit circle, there's a lot of angles that have a cosine of one half. Cosine of one half, you got pi over three. You've got um, five pi over three. You've got anything that you can add two pi to this, and it'll also have it right. So you can keep going and going and going. So there's a limitation on your range for all these inverse trig functions. And for the cosine inverse, the range is limited to between zero and pi. So the range of your cosine inverse function is theta has to be between, whoops, theta has to be between zero inclusive and pi, not including it. Actually, no, including pi also, my bad. Because the cosine at pi would be a negative one. Yeah, so, the, so it's between uh, zero and pi. So to do this problem, for example, right here, what we would do is um, you can see, remember uh, in another video I talked about how the square root of three squared, these two functions are inverses of each other and so they kind of just undo each other. So that's the, a lot of times that's all that happens. So in this particular example, as long as this, as long as your angle is in the range, as long as this angle, pi over six, is included in here, these are just gonna cancel each other out and you're gonna be done. So your answer is pi over six. Because this, all this is right here is a ratio, right? It's some ratio, it actually happens to be one half, I'm sorry root 3 over 2, right? Root 3 over 2. And so cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 is just pi over 6. Now the trick comes in when you have a problem like this. So now they're asking you what the cosine inverse of the cosine of negative pi over 6 is. You can't just cancel those out because negative pi over six does not, is not included in, my, in the range. So actually you can't do that, that is not true. So I'm gonna erase all that and instead what you do, you could, if you want, you could just do, you could do that right away. But then you have to recognize, you have to look and think about your range and you have to say, whoops, that's not in my range. So which angle has the same cosine as negative pi over six, but it's in this range. And the way you find that is you look at your unit circle and you know negative pi over six is here, but remember my cosine inverse range has to be between there and there. So you go straight across and it's gonna be right there. So that's gonna be five pi over six. So you cross that out and you write five pi over six. That's one way to do it, is just to think, it, think of it like that. Cancel them out, write your answer, but then check to make sure that's part of the range. And if it's not, write the um, angle. It's not coterminal. It's not a coterminal angle, but it has the same value in the, in the other quadrant, in quadrant number two in this case. Let's try another one. So if I said, what's the sine inverse of the cosine of negative pi over six? This is a little bit more complicated because these aren't the same. These aren't inverses of each other. This is the sine inverse and this is the cosine. So, but again, let's think it through. What am I saying? I'm saying this is some um, ratio of numbers. So that's, that's a ratio. In fact, you can just look up what the ratio is and you'll see that it's negative root three over two in your unit circle. And then you're saying to yourself, what's the sine inverse of negative root three over two? Well, now we're talking about the sine, not the cosine. So it's gonna be it's going to be the complement to pi over 6, which is pi over 3, right? Because cosine and sine are 
complementary functions. So actually that's going to be the complement. But then we have to think to ourselves, what's the range? We know the range of the cosine inverse, but the range of the sine inverse is different. Sine inverse range is theta has to be between, um, whoops, I wrote that wrong. It's got, theta has to be between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees or negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. That's the range of the sine inverse. So I'm thinking to myself, what's the, remember this is an angle. The answer to this question is going to be some angle, either in radians or degrees. I'll say degrees. What's the angle whose sine is negative root 3 over 2? Well, it's negative, so it's going to be in the fourth quadrant, right? It's going to be in the fourth quadrant, not in the first quadrant. If you think of that, if you think of it like that. Here's your first quadrant, here's your fourth quadrant. And what angle, what angle has a sine of negative root 3 over 2? Well, you can actually use this to help you think about it. It's going to be the complement of that one, which is negative pi over 3, which is actually in radians, not degrees. So you could have also said negative 60 degrees. Let's try another one. So what's the tangent inverse of the sine of 210? Well, now we've got to think about what the domain, or what the range, rather, of the tangent inverse function is. So the, the range of the tan inverse function is between negative 90 and positive 90, not including them. So it's like the, it's like the sine one, but it doesn't have the equal to part to it because it, it, it's not defined at those places. Um, so the tangent inverse of sine of 210, so the sine of 210, the sine of 210 is just some um, angle or, or some ratio rather, side ratio. So let's look at our unit circle. 210 is right here. The sine of 210 is negative 1 half. So this is where it was kind of a tricky question because this is usually one that you're not going to have. So this would be tangent inverse is negative 1 half or the tangent inverse of negative one-half, but you don't have that. That doesn't exist on your unit circle. It exists, just not on your unit circle. So you'd actually have to use your calculator to do that. It wouldn't be one that you could do um, without a calculator or some, some chart that tells you tan inverse. So if you punch that in your calculator and you get negative 26.56 degrees, again, that's not in your unit circle. You can still do the problem, it's just not going to be in a unit circle. So you can use your unit circle to find the sine of that, but then the tangent inverse of that is going to be in that place. So a lot of times they'll give you these questions and they'll expect you to do it without a calculator, and you can if you have your unit circle and if you understand the concept, but sometimes they'll give you a question, well, that, yeah, if they gave you that question, they wouldn't expect you to do that without your calculator. They might ask you what quadrant is it in? And you could say it's in the fourth, it's in the fourth quadrant. It's between negative 90 and 0. Because you know that the sine of 210 is a negative value. And so the tangent inverse of a negative value has to be in that fourth quadrant. It's got to be here. Because it's a neg that's where your tangent is negative. Your tangent inverse would be negative rather as well.